Okay, here I'm going to show you a selection of paintings of wildlife, all painted using watercolour and almost all painted without any pencil drawing first. This is a way I really like to work, um, particularly a way I really like to work when I'm outdoors and all but one of the paintings I'll show you just now were painted from life rather than from photos. Um, and rather than from sketches. And that's my, my ideal way to work, is to sketch and paint from real life. So first of all, here are ducks on uh, Montrose shore. And these are actually not entirely ducks. We've got a black-headed gull here. Um, the rest are mergansers. And I painted these using a dark brown, a dark blue, probably raw umber and ultramarine blue, and a pot of water, and one or two watercolour brushes. Anyone who hasn't tried painting wildlife directly from life, I really, really, really recommend you try it in this way. Um, I don't always do this, but I often find that when I'm sitting and sketching using a pencil or using pens, sketching wildlife, uh, well, of course there's merit to that and value to that, but if you're just using a brush directly onto paper, and particularly if you're doing as here, not really thinking about the colours of whatever wildlife you're looking at, um, but just going for the shapes, so just using all one colour, then your brush really flows across the paper in a very quick way, and it can be much easier than working using something like pencil and aiming for more detail. If you look here at this merganser, I can just, I painted this years ago now, but I can just feel myself with the brush having this really satisfying experience of just a little brush mark, widening the brush mark out, a little bit of um, angling to be the feathers on the crest of the head, then down onto the neck, then just a bit of backwards and forwards here and a couple of lines here to represent the tail, and that's it. Here we have two eider ducks, one, two, and a grey seal, doing that thing that seals do when they're looking extremely content. They bounce up out of the water and sort of flop their heads backwards. That's what was going on here. And I chose to use almost exactly the same colours as the waves. You can see that in this closest eider, this is where I've put the most detail, but not much detail. Here, even less detail, and the head is only represented by these two marks here, uh, without worrying at all that there's white paper showing, and without worrying that the highlights in the head are merging into the white highlights of the sea. You can see that the sea is created using primarily the white of the paper. So don't be scared with watercolour painting to leave lots of white paper showing. And in fact, leaving lots of white paper showing will generally enhance the colours of the paint which you do use. And yeah, the grey seal, its nose up here, its eyes will be up here, this then leads down to its back and its tummy would be down here. And look, it's just, just some splodges really couple of really quick ones here. I remember painting these first time I'd ever painted shoveler ducks and I was just using my watercolours trying to just represent this massive wideness at the front of the beak of a shoveler duck. You really should have a look at shoveler duck beaks. It's quite, quite incredible when you see them for the first time. Sandwich turns. Again, very, very quickly done, and I was not happy with these. I never finished this. This often happens when I'm out and about, and when I'm in my studio. So don't worry if you are someone who comes home from a day out sketching with some things which you're not happy with, or even with everything which you're not happy with. You're learning from all, all the paintings that you make, all the sketches that you make when you're out there. Here is an uncompleted. Now these are Fulmar, 
unfortunately my camera is not far enough away to be able to let you see this whole thing. Those I've showed you so far are approximately A5. This is um, a bit larger than A4. So this time I started off by painting in the background, trying to get the, the, the rocks. The, um, I think it was, I think it was Sea Campion that they were nesting amongst the rocky cliffs behind, as I've said, and some of the yellow touches of lichen. Then I started to highlight the features of the birds, the eyes, quite sort of, hmm, quite sort of eyebrowed eyes, quite a lot of shadow goes on down here on Fulmars, and just a suggestion of where the beak joins the feathers of the face, bit of the back, the dark wings on the back there, down here, down here. And if I one day do get round to finishing this, I will not do very much more. I'll just be adding in some shading, adding in a bit of warmth into their feathers. Um, just, oh, you're about to hear a train going past my studio. I hope that picks up on the recording. The benefit of having my new station studio, Burnt Island Station Studio, is that if I've ever got a train to catch, I do not have far to go. The uh, disadvantage is that whenever I'm doing my online teaching or recording videos like this, you hear that pretty often. So here we go, Fulmar's not too far from finishing. This one, to show you that wildlife in a painting needs not be detailed at all, here we've got a curlew. And this is one which I unfortunately startled up as I walked around a corner at Fort George one morning really, really early, a few years ago when I was up speaking um, to do with the Nairn Book and Arts Festival. And I just loved this, the organic shape of the curlew flying up beside the military, but quite, quite sort of fantastical tower on the corner of Fort George. And you can see here just a very few brush strokes using dark, dark blue ink. So that will be ultramarine blue and um, probably the raw umber again mixed together, primarily blue. And just a quick line to mark the beak, the two wings, the body and the tail. Here, working in more detail, an eider nesting on the Isle of May, just outside the low light lighthouse. And in this painting, I started off with a light, light brown, light ochre, yellow ochre colour here. And then a bit of washing on top of it of a slightly darker shade, a bit of brown mixed in. Um, and then just finished off with lots and lots of fine detail. You can see using a pretty fine brush if you compare this to the size of my fingers. Um, to just brush in the nostril, the eye, the ridge above the eye and some of the feathering. Over here I've got um, Campion growing down here in some detail. Uh, I think this is actually Thrift rather than Campion growing out of the wall. Puffin flying past suggestion of gannets or are they the crests of waves another puffin over here so there there's a detailed bird there's detail in these two pieces of foliage vegetation um but not much else detail throughout this whole painting and going for this unusual composition with the really dark blue shadow of the lighthouse this is the lighthouse we stay in by the way the isle of may bird observatory brilliant place to stay. And then the dark blue of the sea, sort of tying in with this blue shadow. And then sunlit wall here, sunlit clouds in the sky, and, and that's it. The only one I'm going to show you which wasn't painted actually out there from life is this one. And these are four lovely golden eyes that I was just really struck um, down at uh, Musselboro one day. Um, these four golden eyes were just riding on the waves in the 
it was quite a choppy sea, so they were really going up and down. They were fairly far out. I threw my binoculars, watched them and sketched this using pens. Oh, I think we're about to hear youngsters outside my studio being noisy. Another drawback of this studio. Amazing studio, by the way. <laughs> um, so here we go. The golden eyes turned into this. Hope they don't do any swearing. Not the golden eyes, the youths. Um, here I've used all watercolour paint plus a little bit of white gouache mixed in here to just try to bring back some of these, um, the white on the side of the golden eyes, but I've managed to leave this paper white here to give a really bright, shining out white on that golden eyes head. Male golden eye, these are black and white. And look, I haven't even painted in their golden eyes, but that doesn't matter. I was just going for a loose, abstract. Most often what I'm doing is painting wildlife within the landscape. Um, rather than really detailed close-ups of wildlife. Just a few more to show. Okay, so here, not birds, dolphins. And this is again doing what I described before at the very start of this film of using just one colour um, drawing with my brush. So these dolphins I, up in Aberdeen, as you can read here, I started off trying to draw these using pencil and it just was not working. The dolphins are far too quick. All you're seeing is a quick glimpse as they bounce out of the water, just like my seal was bouncing out of the water. Um, as they jump out of the water and splash back into the water. So then when I got at my brush and started just really watery, watery, watery paint and just quickly painting it on, drawing using the brush and the paint, I became so much happier with them. This one here and a little bit of splashing. Look, here is a full jump right out of the water, bottlenose dolphins. Um, and I did a little bit of flicking with my brush to rep represent the flat splashes which were going everywhere as the dolphins jumped. And here's a grey seal, its back and its nose swimming past. One more of the dolphins. It was a, a great day that. I remember it very well and I wrote a blog post to talk all about it. Um, this was trying to more give an impression of slightly looking down on the dolphins and the tail visible under the water, but sort of blurred out and just the part of the dolphin which was above the water looking nice and crisp. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay, this is a much bigger piece of paper, harder to show you. This is unfortunately a dead blackbird, dead juvenile blackbird, 31st of August 2013, quite some time ago, and I found it um, it was nearly dead and I think it had flown into a window, so it did die and I took the opportunity to bring it inside and I, this is the one where I did use pencil first. Uh, <laughs> lots of wildlife artists will, if they find a dead animal, they will take advantage of that fact to draw it and examine it and if you do ever have the opportunity to do that, it's a really good way, <clears throat> excuse me, really good way to help you to get to know the shape and the form and the structure of a certain animal. Being able to do things like pull out the wing and see how feathers join to each other, have a close up look at the claws, which you never can normally do, even a close up look at the beak. Oh, train coming through. So although it's not necessarily a pleasant thing to find a dead animal, it can benefit your art and your understanding. And just using um, a selection of warm browns and some blue. And warm browns because um, juvenile blackbirds are really very warm brown in colour. Making sure that I left some touches of the white paper showing trying to keep the white paper all around the blackbird really crisp white and also making sure that I used some 
almost as dark as I could get. Really, really, really dark brown slash black mixed together to get that lovely contrast between very dark and very light. Two to go. Okay, wildlife with no level of detail at all. So landscape painting or a seascape painting and three gannets flying past. And the way I painted these was by not painting them. They're just about the only part of the whole painting which have no paint on at all. So I was really careful with this one. Um, <clears throat> one could use masking fluid to mask out the white where your gannets were going to be, then make the painting. Then when the painting's dried, you can rub off the masking fluid. I don't ever seem to use masking fluid, so this was just painted from life um, all in one go when I was out on the Isle of May and these this amazing stormy stormy not stormy in terms of choppy but stormy in terms of the colour and the clouds stormy scene stormy sea and I managed to not <laughs> pull my brush or not pull the very wet watercolour paint over these three areas of white. Last painting <clears throat> excuse me these are assorted seabirds. Uh, we've got the shearwater, we've got gannets and some sort of ox. And I can't remember which but puffins or razorbills or guillemots as far as I remember from a, a boat journey. Here I just wanted to put a selection of the birds I was watching onto a piece of paper. Uh, the panoramic paper is really nice for sort of giving a suggestion of, of space and possibly of a journey. So these, I wasn't seeing each one of these at the same moment as the others, but I was seeing lots of birds and I just selected these particular poses to paint all together. Just hold it a bit closer. Um, so <clears throat> with the gannets, same thing as in the last painting I showed you, I was having to be really careful not to paint over the areas I wanted to leave white. So really I was painting the um, the space around the gannets and not really painting them until the last stage when I'd let the paint around dry and then I put on the black wingtips and the slight ochre suggestion for the head. Same here, same here. The sheer water was the opposite way around. I was painting onto the white paper so I was actually painting the bird rather than painting the space around it. And finally the ox down here and you know they're really just little arrows or crosses but if you look at this and see that it you can tell that it's sea birds you can tell that it must be the ocean um <clears throat> then if you know birds you can probably more or less tell that these are going to be something in the auk family such as puffins because they're the right shape they're small when i say they're the right shape they're <laughs> broadly the right shape small stubby things with small stubby wings and they're flying low down, which they quite often are flying low across the water. And that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed having a look at all these um, wildlife watercolours of mine. If you want, you could pause it somewhere through the video, anywhere through the video, and have a go at your own versions of some of them. A really good way to, to learn. Okay, thank you for watching.